It's actually funny how meta this movie can be. I mean, at some point we actually see a movie production inside of this movie, and you can't stop wondering if what happens in the movie during this movie production happens when they shot this movie. My name is Adaris and welcome to the review for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is Quentin Tarantino's ninth film because apparently he sees Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 as only one film. So this is his ninth outing. It takes place in 1969 around the time where the Manson family was doing, you know, the murder thing and also there was this guy on the moon where we follow the two fictional characters Rick Dalton and Cliff Booth where Rick Dalton is an actor played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Cliff Booth is his stunt double played by Brad Pitt. And we just follow along these guys twilight years I would say because they have reached that point in their life where their career is not in the uptake anymore it's kind of not even just stale it's almost in a decline so we follow them struggle through their work life at this point and them not knowing what to do next we also kind of follow along with sharon tate so in case you don't know your history sharon tate was one of the victims from the manson murders so yeah we follow her along up until the specific date and then we follow these two guys and that's pretty much the plot of this movie. So what did I like about this movie? Well, first of all, it's Quentin Tarantino. So you know you're gonna get some sharp dialogue, you know you're gonna get some interesting filmography, and also, I'm pretty sure this is filmed on actually film, because it kind of had that feel of, I don't know, a movie shot in the 60s, or late 60s, beginning of the 70s. It doesn't really seem like it is a modern movie. I mean, yes, a lot of the images are more crisp, more detailed, more sharp, but there are some greens on the shots that just give that feel of realism, and most importantly, that it was shot back in the day. So I really appreciate just the visual look of this movie. It's really down to earth. There's no over-the-top thing, or for the most part, there's no over-the-top thing, and it just brings you back into the good old 60s, 70s-ish. And also the action, for the most part, is actually really really great i really appreciate all the acting in here there's no over the top it doesn't really try to give an outstanding performance for any of the actors it just tries to give a great performance where you don't really recognize the acting you're just taking in by all of these characters and just follow along in their lives without even noticing that you're just spending hours with doing nothing really so there's not really any of the acting that really stands out but for the most part the main cast is doing a great great job and i just really appreciate that even though that this movie is two hours and i think 40 minutes long or something like that you're just following along these people's life and you don't really notice that you're wasting or wasting a lot of time i mean i did in the beginning 30 or 40 minutes but then i just got used to it and just enjoyed these characters journey throughout life or throughout this one year which basically means that this is a very easy move to follow along there's no out of order timelines or anything here you can actually be half asleep and still follow along with this movie so it might some places be a bad thing but here i actually think it's for this movie's strength and also just appreciate how this movie managed to do so much with actually so little now it's kind of hard to explain and we'll get into it after the cons but there's not really much going on in here and yet almost every scene is worth watching this. Every scene just have something to offer you in some capacity. It might not be the most amazing and exciting thing, but at least the scenes had something to offer. It might be great acting, it might be great storytelling, it might be interesting dialogue or some other kind of thing, but I just appreciated the way it presented things and was a joy to watch. Now, usually there will be a lot more interesting thing to say about, you know, a Quentin Tarantino movie. I mean, it's Quentin Tarantino, the most unpredictable director in Hollywood. I mean, it might not be the most unpredictable, but when you go into a Tarantino movie, you don't know what to expect except of great dialogue and a lot of funny violence. But other than that, you don't really know what to expect, whereas here well still you don't know what to expect but uh, anyway <laughs> there's not much more i can really say that is great about this movie because it's a very simple one so so what didn't i like about this movie well first of all 
the story actually because the story doesn't really know what it want to tell does it want to focus on the old movie making back in the 60s and 70s does it want to focus on the Manson murders does it want to focus on the friendship between these two guys what is the purpose of this movie and frankly I'm not sure that is actually a problem with the movie because this is not something that the movie really embraces that what is this movie is it this thing is it the other thing the problem is that the movie doesn't really know so we just shows you everything and by showing you everything you're left with nothing you don't really feel anything after you have watched this movie which shouldn't happen when you have watched the tarantino movie you should at least feel something but not really here it doesn't really stood out i mean yeah there are two violent scenes and yeah, that's pretty much it unfortunately there's no really heavy dialogue scene or anything or monologue or speech or anything that even remotely just stood out to me it was just mediocre which brings me to my next problem with this Margot Robbie as Tate. Not that her performance was a bad performance or was anything wrong with the performance. No, the problem is that she is so heavily featured in this movie. But in the end, it kind of mounts to nothing. Maybe it's to let you think that this movie is going to go in one direction where, in fact, it might go in another direction. I don't know. And I can't really say more because then it would be a spoiler. But just every time that a scene focused entirely on her, I just thought was wasted movie time because she doesn't really do anything in this movie and she barely talks in this movie. I mean, she, I think she has, what, 15 lines of dialogue or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. She's just there to be there because she was famous for the murders and that's pretty much it so she doesn't really bring much to the movie except that the movie halts every time we focus on her we then bring to the second part was this rick dalton's first movie or the movie extra scene game made in the movie it focused a lot on that aspect and also focused a lot on cliff trying to get the job as a stunt double for him in that movie and then he gets it and then he kind of doesn't get it and it focuses a lot on that but I don't really see that dynamic on screen or I shouldn't say on screen but not in front of the camera in the movie that is shot in the it's hard to explain but the movie they're shooting in the movie they don't really see how they work together when they are on a movie set that's what I mean but still it focuses a lot of its runtime on that movie which end up mounting to nothing it mounts up to absolutely nothing and I know that Quentin Tarantino is famous for kind of wasting a lot of runtime doing nothing important for the plot but usually it is important for the character it kind of develops the character or anything and that's end up tying back to the main plot but not here they're just doing stuff because why not but then again it doesn't add to the story or give anything to the character except that we can see that rick dawson is kind of struggling with the acting of the department because he's also kind of drinking a lot but we also saw that earlier in the movie so i don't know why we need to focus on it Again, because in the end it doesn't really resolve or change anything or bring something worse into him or anything. It just it amounts to nothing, which is kind of irritating because Cliff's and Rick's relationship, it is one of the strengths of this movie. It's what brings this movie home for me and it doesn't really focus on it. It doesn't utilize that aspect as much as it could have been because it's more of here's Cliff Booth's adventure and here is Rick Dalton's adventure. Then at the end of the movie, they kind of come back together and we see them do a thing and that's it's pretty much it. Which kind of brings me to the end of the movie. Now the end of the movie will alienate some people and might gain some cheering from other people. And I'm actually split in the middle because I kind of wanted to see what he wanted to do with the whole Manson case and the whole Manson story because he said it in the old times. He's no, the old time. Because he said it at the Manson murders. He actually features the Manson family a lot in this movie. So I was kind of hoping that we got to see more of what impact they had and how the crimes that they committed would kind of impact our main characters because there should be a reason that you're actually focusing your movie on the Manson murders but apparently not here because it doesn't really affect the main characters at all. Again I'm kind of getting into spoilers without spoiling it and I'm trying not to. <laughs> what I'm gonna say is that the Manson family murders and crimes and anything isn't really used as much in this movie as it should have been considering it is the main focus point of the movie besides Besides our two main characters and in the end you're gonna have fun but you're also gonna get grossed out and when the credits roll you're gonna sit there and think wait is that it because the movie just it kind of ends out of nowhere I mean 
You kind of see it coming, but when you get to the end, you just feel unsatisfied because it amounts to nothing. I'm not repeating myself, so <laughs> I'm just gonna get, get on with it. So what you end up with this movie is you gotta get some interesting dialogue from Quinstan Chiro. You're not gonna get the most interesting. You're not gonna get the best dialogue, but at no time did I feel like the dialogue was a drag or anything. It's, it's, it's fine dialogue in Quentin Tarantino standards, so to speak. You want to get some interesting visuals and sound design, you're going to get some great humors. The classic Quentin Tarantino humor, you're going to get it here. You're also going to get some violence in this movie, but it will be far less than what you expect. So it's not going to be as bloody as you would hope, considering it's focusing on the Manson family murders and such things. But yeah. The movie doesn't really know what it wants to tell of a story. Does it want to be a slice of life kind of movie? Does it want to focus on a historical event? Does it want to focus or be an homage to the old cinema making? Or what does it want to be? It doesn't really know that. And there's a lot of places in this movie that doesn't really bring anything to the table, especially the Margaret Roberts scenes. They could have been better. They could have added something to the movie, but the only thing you get to see is just what her or her character's daily life is is but in the end it doesn't really matter because you don't really get to know her because she doesn't really do anything so what's the point so let's read this movie so what is the point of this movie what did quentin tarantino want to tell or show us with this movie is it his love for the old cinema is it its historical piece is it the friendship between these two characters what is it? And unfortunately, there's no real answer. And this movie is not as strongest movie, let's say that. It's almost its weakest. I mean, depending on what taste you have for Quentin Tarantino, if you like the Kill Bill movies, then you won't agree with me here. But to me, his worst movie of those that I've seen is still Kill Bill Volume 2 because I don't really think it managed to do anything interesting wise. <laughs> But that is just me. I'm not a fan of Kill Bill Volume 2. Kill Bill Volume 1, I think, is okay, but I think his strength really lies in the more heavy dialogue movies where he kind of wants to amp up the tense of a scene, like Inglorious Bastards or The Django Unchained or The Hateful Eight. And this movie doesn't really have, I mean, you have one exciting scene that has an interesting payoff, I would say at least. But other than that, this movie is kind of forgettable one. I don't really think I'm gonna see this movie ever again, whereas. The other movies that I mentioned, I definitely want to see again. So, I will say that once upon a time in Hollywood, you should catch it on Netflix. Meh experience. Which kind of sucks to me because Quentin Tarantino is one of those special directors. He doesn't make a lot of movies. I mean, this is only his ninth movie and he's been at it for, what do I say, 26 years or something like that. I can't remember when Wizard Doctor came out, but he has been going at it for a long time. He's only made ninth movie, so you will hope that the quality of his movie is sky high. And for the most part, they are, but here, unfortunately, he kind of falls flat on his face. So we just hope that his next and apparently last movie, his 10th movie, will be an amazing chapter to just close this whole adventure on. But Let's see. So, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, have you seen it? What do you think about it? And do you agree or disagree with my kind of gripes of this movie? And what is your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie so far? I still think that Django Unchained is the best movie, just because it just feels like a wholesome package, a whole adventure story. But whatever you think, comment below on me your thoughts. And as always, until I see you next video, remember to stay awesome. Bye! So that is kind of the worst head bashing I've seen anyone done to another person. I mean, whoa, whoa.